Uh, hey everyone, uh, welcome to Viper Day. Um, shout out to all of you who came here to Viper Day instead of a uh, <laughs> like a sort of a Barbie Oppenheimer situation here. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, today I'm going to be talking about gate seals. So this is the light of uh, mechanism for sealing gates. Uh, we're going to be talking about how we um, safeguard our withdrawals with uh, gate seals that were built using Viper. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, before we're going to start, uh, show, uh, I'm going to talk about me a bit. So I'm an engineering contributor to Lido. Yes, that's it. <laughs> I'm Azad. Yeah. Today I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about Lido, what it is. Um, we're going to talk about uh, gate seal use cases. What are those, and how do we develop them? So, uh, but before we start, let me like uh, do a quick poll. Who, or please raise your hand if you know what liquid staking is. Uh, like, okay, a lot of hands. So uh, I'll I'll try to be quick. So, liquid staking as opposed to like native staking uh, does not have like a 32 32-bit entry banner. You can enter with any amount. You don't have to like uh, manage your like har hardware or like rent a, a like a cloud or something. So you get a uh, when you stake, you get a LST in return. That's like a liquid staking token. You can use that in DeFi or any like uh, any supported apps. And you can exit anytime uh, before you couldn't like before like if you had the, did not implement withdrawals, you could not exit and they needed withdrawals. But with liquid staking, you can exit anytime. You can exit via withdrawals, or you can just sell the token. So, um, so Lido. What is Lido? Lido is a liquid staking protocol. Uh, to, to, to be a bit more technical, it's a middle, middleware that connects users, users with uh, ETH capital that do not want to run hardware with node operators that do want to run that, but uh, maybe lacking some of the capital. So, um, for, a, for like a small fee. So, um, we have like a stat token. That's the LS, That's our LST that rebases every day. So each day you get the the, the protocol grows some of the rewards. Um, we have true withdrawals. That means like we can actually, for example, um, like you can do withdrawals two ways. You can just um, give uh, 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 like uh, allocate the the incoming deposits to withdrawals and just give uh, that, that that ether. To, to withdrawing users, but if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go all the way like Lido, you, you're gonna have to like withdraw actual validators from consensus layer. So that's what we do. So we're uh, widely adopted across DeFi. We have deep liquidity. So yeah, you can step anytime and exit anytime, uh, easy. So um, this is our these are the quick stats. We have about. 8.9 million ETH stake. That's about 31.5 percent of all uh, stake ETH. That's about like 18 billion in TVL. Uh, all of that is spread across 39 uh, independent value uh, node operators. Uh, so, uh, qu uh, quick uh, intro to Lido's mission. We we try to we are, we strive to keep Ethereum decentralized and accessible to all. Uh, we we, we want to make staking secure, uh, secure and simple, and we um, foresee Lido, Ethereum as the like coordination and value layer for the internet. So yeah, uh, feel, feel free to take uh, photos. <laughs> so how do we how do we operate this huge protocol? Uh, we do that with the help of Lido DAO. So Lido DAO is a decentralized autonomous autonomous organization that operates the protocol. It is headquartered on Ethereum, and um, uh, it is governed by the LDO token. So all of the decisions um, are are done through the votings. LDO um, LDO holders vote on every like contract upgrade, in like state changes, or in like fund management, like incentive programs, grants, and so on. So um, because uh, you have to vote on every decision. The reaction time is a bit slow for the DAO. So uh, right now we have the 72 period for our voting. So we have like a two two phase voting. We call it like the first 40, uh, 48 hours you can vote yes or no, and the last 24 hours you can only vote no. 
this is like a like a like a, a quick like a smart trick to prevent governance capture. For example, if uh, there is like a vote that's been like like a shady vote that's been like uh, non-active th this whole time, and then uh, some some uh, LDO whale comes and votes yes and the, uh, and captures the governance. We want to prevent that by having like the 24-hour period, like a the, uh, for voting no only objections only. Yeah. So. Um, but that doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is that we have three days, uh, minimum three days, to make a decision, any decision uh, in LIDAR. So that, mm, that is a bit problematic when, uh, in some emergency situations when you have to like, pause withdrawals like, immediately. So you, you may have some like a, like a potential bug or something, so you have to stop the protocol or the withdrawals in this case immediately. So. Um, so the problem with um, with Ethereum withdrawals, it's a new mechanic. So it's a uh, cross-network async operation. There's a lot of variables there. So variable exit times. We don't um, like. Well, we're not sure what to do when there's like a loss of finality or some uh, inactivity leaks or like in in case of mass slashing events. So we want to have like a safeguard to to protect us from us. Uh, so I'm going to give you like a, one example for that. Well, imagine like the withdrawals are hacked, hacked. For example, you can there's like a vulnerability in Lido withdrawal contract, or and you can like a queue up uh, a withdrawal request without actually locking your step, or you can um, submit a withdrawal request uh, at some like a crazy one to ten rate or something like that. So in that case, we have to um, stop the withdrawals contract. How do we do that? We start the voting process. That takes, like, as I've said, three days. While that is happening, like, ETH is being siphoned, siphoned from the withdrawal contract. That is not good for us. So, another scenario, for example, uh, we have like an oracle that manages the validator exit from the consensus layer. So, what if that oracle gets hacked? What do we do? So, for example, if it is um, compromised and, and emits the message, to X all the LIDAR validators. We have like a sanity check in place that limits that to 600 validators at a time. So, it, um, but still, like while the governance is voting on stopping the um, validator exit bus, the, the validators are exiting and the LIDAR APR is, is, is lower. So, um, for, this, for these cases, for these critical cases, we, we came up with this gate seal mechanism. It's a like a small contract, like a 250 lines, that um, that functions as an emergency pause, immediate emergency pause. It's one-time use. It's immediately activated. It's operated by a multi-seek. It automatically resumes when you pause, and in like six days, it automatically resumes. You don't have to hold the vote or, or anything like that. And it self-deprecates in, in like a set period. So those are the like the um, like the barriers that uh, minimize the, the power of the multi -seek. So how, how gate seal works? So you have some contract that is possible, for example, the withdrawal queue contract or validator uh, exit bus contract, that can be paused. You grant the role from, the, uh, from this contract to gate seal, and gate seal is operated by the gate seal multi -seek. So whenever we want to pause the, the contract, the withdrawal queue, the, the committee, the multi sig triggers the gate seal. Gate seal uh, does all the checks and pauses the, 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 the contract or the contracts. So, uh, pretty simple, I think. So, um, the gate seal setup. We, these are the, like the four things that we use for, our, for gate seals. This is the EIP 5202 blueprint for the gate seal factory. We used the Viper 037 and the, of course, uh, APE uh, framework. Um, next up, so why did we choose Viper? Uh, yeah, Viper is the, like, the coolest language because like, Solidity is more of a, like a boomer language, I think, but uh, Viper is more like modern, yeah. So it's simple, it's readable, uh, we like Python. Uh, so even though like, uh, most of the code base in Lido is still in Solidity, which I personally do not approve, um, but that doesn't matter. Uh, so um, uh, we use Viper for like a standalone like sidecar projects. 
And because it's uh, easily auditable, does not have any dependencies, so Viper was our go-to choice. Uh, so um, when we create a gate seal, we have like a, a bunch of parameters that we have to um, um, that we have to uh, specify. All of these parameters are immutable. So when you create a gate seal, it, uh, uh, when you create a gate seal, uh, you have to um, input these uh, parameters. The sealer, that's the, the multi-sig address that's going to be triggering the gate seal. The seal duration, that means the pause duration uh, that the contracts are going to be paused for. The sealables, the, these are the contracts that will be paused in an emergency. And the expiry timestamp, it's the timestamp where when the gate seal is expired, automatically expired. Why do we have this uh, expiry timestamp? Because we don't, do not want to over rely on gate seals. We keep in mind that it's a, a tempor temporary solution. We don't want to like, uh, always rely on a multi seek So we've came up with gate seal as a temporary solution. So we expire gate seals um, every like year so that we have like a sort of a inconvenience bomb. So we have to come up, we have to motivate ourselves to come up with a more of a, a long-term solution that does not involve a multi seek We don't like multi seeks in Lido. Yeah, so uh, one of them, like uh, the crucial, critical blocks of a uh, uh, gate seal is the posable uh, contract. So we were inspired by the open Zeppelin's posable contract, we, but we've had uh, like our own take on it. So in open Zeppelin, you have the, just the boolean, whether it's paused or not. We have the posable until interface that, that uh, stores the actual timestamp where it's uh, until which it's paused. So when you pause the contract, you also specify the duration when the contract will be unpaused. For example, you pause for for like a, I don't know, three days, and then in three days it's gonna be automatically resumed, so that you have save some gas on the resume. Uh, you don't have to call the resume uh, function. Uh, yeah. Um, so we opted to use uh, Viper factories. We wanna uh, be inconvenienced that we have to redeploy uh, Git seal every time. But we do not want to be too too in, inconvenient, so we use uh, factories you know, instead of uh, writing like a deploy script. So uh, we had three choices: we could um, deploy new gate seals using create minimal proxy. That's like a we just uh, deploy a proxy contract that uses another contract as the library or like the implementation, but has its own uh, like state. We do not want to use that because it's sort of a dependency. We don't want to use a dependency. Another choice we have to we have we had create copy of that's the Viper just copies the bytecode of another contract, and you can use that. We did not like that either. Like that either because we cannot you cannot call the constructor of this um, other contract that you're copying bytes of. So we opted to use create from blueprint. That's like a you, you create, uh, you uh, store the init code on, on chain, you copy the bytecode, and you can call, call the cons constructor of the contract. So you don't, you don't have to use the initialize pattern or anything like that. Uh, it's much more simpler uh, than using the initialize pattern. Um, so, so as I've said, we have the init code, but the init code, uh, we, we thought that has, has to follow some, some standard. We chose EIP 5202 because, as, as far as I was aware, it was the, the only standard for Viper blueprints. So um, you de uh, you deploy this init code on chain, and it's it's like storing the init code on chain. But um, you cannot use that as a like a like a regular contract because it has the like the invalid uh, opcode in the beginning, and any direct calls uh, to the this uh, blueprint are going to be reverted. So it's like explicit, explicitly telling you that it's not a contract, it's a template. You have to use that as a template to, to generate new contracts, new gate seals. Unfortunately, um, uh, this uh, standard, you cannot uh, verify uh, EAP 5202 blueprints on Etherscan uh, yet. We hope that they're going to add it uh, soon. Um, yeah. So um, another decision we had to make uh, is to fail or not to fail. What do I mean by that? So uh, you have like a bunch of contracts you can pause. Mm. And uh, 
you can uh, trigger this gate seal and pause whatever pauses, whatever does not fail to pause. Like if, if the contract fails to pause, for example, it does not have the, the, the right access, uh, we just skip it and go to the next contract and try to pause that. So another, um, another choice that we um, could go is just if, if, we, if the contract fails to pause, we just throw an error. Uh, we decided to throw an error because there are some situations where you have to pause uh, all of the contracts or none of them. Uh, those are the, uh, those, that was the critical requirement for us. So we either pause all of them or none of them. So uh, yeah, but um, as, as as you know, when the when the transaction fails, the logs are not uh, emitted. Uh, any like events are not emitted. Emitted. So to simplify debugging, like for example, we have to uh, pause the contract like immediately. We don't have to time. We don't have to time to debug. So we are trying to uh, speed up the debugging process by throwing the, the, the actual in indexes of the contracts that failed to pause. So this was like a, we had to uh, get a little bit, I don't know, kinky with that because uh, Viper strings are static. So you have to um, avoid uh, any mani manipulations with Viper strings and uh, just throw um, the, the string at the, at the end. So, for example, if we pass like, a, like some eight uh, contracts to pause and one, three, four, and six indexes fail to pause, we just collect them, turn that into a decimal, like uh, 6,431, and then we mm, convert that to a string, and then we throw the error with that uh, string, and then we know like the six index, index uh, four, three, one failed. Now we can debug uh, more uh, quickly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, another uh, thing that we had, like we had a uh, bug discovered in the audit, like uh, StateMind did our audit of gate seals, and it was like a peculiar bug. Like uh, when we called the other contract to pause, we used the raw call function because we wanted to capture the the response, like not the response, the, the whether it succeeded or not. And when you specify output size uh, as zero and revert and fail or false, it, the success value is actually random because it um, erroneously uh, loads the, the, the value from memory instead of the stack. So that was like, like, a, like a tricky bug, bug that, but it was, we had a, like a workaround, we just put um, max out size as uh, 32 and it works okay. So, but uh, the bug was fixed actually very quickly, so shout out to Viper team. We, we use like 0.37 version, it, this bug was fixed in 0.38 pretty quickly, so uh, thank you. Yeah, so even Charles uh, confirmed the bug, yeah. So at the end we have uh, uh, one gate cell deployed. So it is secured by a 3 out of 6 multisig, including uh, members from Curve, uh, BGD, and some lighter contributors. So it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be ex expired on May 2024. Unless it's uh, it, unless it's used, once it's used, it cannot be triggered again. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but we hope to never use that. Uh, we hope it expires naturally. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Check out the, the repo. Uh, feel free to use this pattern in your projects. Uh, I think it's it's a pretty like a simple but uh, very like a uh, smart trick. Uh, so yeah. Uh, thank you everyone. Uh, I had a Great time talking to you. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> ah, yeah. I wanted to ask, do uh, you see verification of source files? Is that a thing? Uh, sorry? Do you see verification of uh -huh. source files? Is that a thing for me? If, um, if people stand as a group, the source files. Uh, no, I'm not sure because uh, the, the thing with, uh, with verification of uh, templates, because it has this like the invalid opcode in the beginning, like the FE uh, opcode, it fails to verify anywhere. So maybe there's like a like a workaround that we, you can skip the, this this first three bytes, uh, the, the three bytes header like the the invalid opcode, the version I think, and the the identifiers. Maybe they can skip this skip these three bytes and verify the rest of the code. Maybe that, but not yet.
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so blueprint verification on ether scan should now be supported. I think we released it like a week or two ago. Uh -huh. uh, it also works with similar match. If it doesn't work, then snow should be a bug. Uh, yeah. 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 Understand that. So th that's not happening. Uh, yeah. Just let us know. Just pass us the contact address. We take a look. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, first, we work with the viper. Uh, we work with the Yen team previously. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any more questions? There's no questions. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Catch you.